Yes, I'm the one. I'm that guy who doesn't like the fucking Bourne movies. I'd go far as to say as I goddamn hate the franchise, but I'm from Boston and we all kind of agreed to always try our hottest to give Matt and Ben and the Wahlberg boys the benefit of the doubt, so whatever. But yeah, I've been completely baffled by what's supposed to be so fascinating about the Bourne series, because from where I sit, it's basically been four installments, now five, counting Legacy, which I do because it's only as bad as the others, worth of mediocre versions of elements that never add up to a whole. The story isn't especially compelling, the action isn't all that inventive or well choreographed, Paul Greengrass' pseudo-verite documentary-style staging is really bad fit for it, even if it was, it's nowhere near Matt Damon's best performance, and as a character, Jason Bourne is just another moody, self-pitying schlub who whose one-note grumping is meant to be mistaken for depth, and at least Christian Bale got a fucking Batman costume to do that shit in. But what always really pissed me off was this whole idea that Bourne was the thinking man's action series, because it was such a patently bullshit designation, since the series barely has an equivalent amount to substantively say on the subject of espionage politics and the fucking Captain America movies. But you see, it's fine there because those movies don't pretend to be some Oliver Stone JFK bullshit. Let's be honest, the reason we're supposed to treat the Bourne series like it's some next level thing wasn't because it was the smarter action series, it's because it was the Bush era American action series with the correct politics. Because the first one came out in 2002, and everyone was still shell-shocked from 9-11, and people, especially in the entertainment press, were worried we were gonna get this shitload of uncomfortable, hyper-patriotic, neocon, wank-off action bullshit like 24, and so when Born Identity came out with a badass spy who fights corrupt military industrial guys instead of stereotypical terrorists, it was this big oasis in the desert kind of moment for them. And Born himself is without a doubt the ideal ersatz Jack Bauer figure for guilty liberals looking for a have-your-cake cop-out. Because you see, the premise is he's actually just this dude named David Webb who got brainwashed by not Halliburton and turned into an emotionless CIA killing machine called Jason Bourne. But now he remembers the truth, or at least what's not the truth, and fights back against his former masters and that's the series. So you still get this macho fantasy of an all-American movie star looking extra-legal assassinating badass, but he acknowledges that that stuff is wrong and he's sad about it and the movie gets to grandstand about geopolitics and hey, all those murders weren't really his fault because he was brainwashed, so let's hear it for zero culpability. You know, at least the James Bond movies were honest about this shit. Why, yes, I'm a post-war wish-fulfillment avatar of British Imperial Supremacy and masculine martial overcompensation. Show what? Now, credit where it's due, at least it seemed to end well in the third one, since when Jason Bourne finally tracks down the guy who forced him to become Jason Bourne, it turns out to have been Jason Bourne, i.e. nobody forced him to, he actually wanted to be an unfeeling CIA killbot for Uncle Sam. Good ending. I mean, the series is still mediocre self-important junk, but at least it ended with some integrity, so of course the first thing this new reboot of the series does is undo that integrity, as Damon's mopey monosyllabic murder machine realizes another memory and discovers that the reason he signed up to be turned into Jason Bourne was because his father was killed in a terrorist attack. But maybe it wasn't a terrorist attack, maybe it was the evil CIA guys tricking him into becoming Jason Bourne, so fuck yeah, we're right back to mopey, one-dimensional face-puncher man, yay. The point seems to be leaving the franchise in a place where they can continue making more sequels every time Matt Damon wants to go off and do an indie project Project, but still afford to live like Matt Damon the rest of the year. And to that end, the secondary plot outside of Bourne's Truth Quest is basically this embarrassingly big sloppy wet ass kiss to the tech bro WikiLeaks hacktivist crowd, where Bourne has to stop an evil government guy played by Tommy Lee Jones because there's some outside the box casting, right? From murdering this douchey tech startup executive who's about to renege on a deal to let the government spy on his user data. And yes, that does mean that now all the big spy sequences involve rooms full of assholes furiously bashing computer keys, talking on Bluetooth earpieces, and shouting ENHANCE at low resolution photographs. Yay, that's always so entertaining. Truth be told, it mostly just feels like an excuse to reset everything to zero and introduce Alicia Vikander as a new, recurring, morally ambiguous female character, because apparently Julia Stiles has aged out of a franchise where we're supposed to buy 45-year-old Matt Damon as a jacked-up hard case who goes around knocking out Serbian prize fighters with one punch. Yeah, sure, that's fair. I will concede that Jones gets in some good one-liners and deadpans because, you know, what the fuck else do you hire him for? And it ends with a pretty solid car chase and fistfight between Damon and an otherwise underused Vincent Cassini which might have been something incredible if there was a reason to give a shit about who these people were and what they wanted. Otherwise, there's just really nothing fucking going on here. Now look, folks, I've been alone in the fucking wilderness for like 14 years as the guy who can't stand the goddamn Bourne movies. So my main hope this week is that maybe this one is finally bad enough that I won't be so lonely here anymore. One star, skip it, didn't like it, see you next week.